Well, I got myself a Buret. Got some bass too. I start to titrate, but I don't see a color change. Well, I got the, forgot my indicator, titration blues. All right, I apologize for that. Uh, that was terrible, and I'll never do that again. Let's go back to where we were in the slides. We had talked about titrating a weak acid with a strong base and what that was going to look like and how that pH was going to be somewhat basic. Um, you heard me talk about a few things uh, in that one, um, particularly half equivalence points, what happens before we start the titration, what happens at the equivalence point, what happens there in between. Um, but maybe it didn't quite make sense or I didn't at least work any problems out with that. So we're going to go into that in more detail. So let's say we've got um, some uh, weak acid. Let's say we have a 0.1 molar hydrofluoric acid. And we're going to titrate that with sodium hydroxide. We're going to titrate it with a strong base. Let's say we are dealing with one liter of solution because when we titrate, we're doing an acid-base neutralization. And what we want is those moles to be equal or they're gonna be equal at the equivalence point. So if we say we're dealing with a, a, a liter of solution, we could just convert our molarities directly into moles. So what's the reaction look like? It's an acid-base neutralization reaction. Weak acid, strong base, we're gonna get a salt, um, so we're gonna have our cation there, our anion, and then we're gonna get water from the H plus and the OH combining. All right, we're just concerned with that equilibrium expression, we're concerned with pH. So water, Pure liquid, we're gonna get that rid of that. Na plus, that's the uh, conjugate acid of a strong base. No effect on the pH, we're gonna to toss that out. We're not gonna worry about that. So I just need to think about that acid-base neutralization. So we have 0.1 moles of HF. So let's say we're not at the equivalence point yet. So we're gonna have less than that amount of sodium hydroxide. We'll just grab 0.05 for now, for funsies. And we haven't started the reaction yet. So we have zero of the conjugate base. Well, these react in a one-to-one -one ratio. There's less sodium hydroxide than there is hydrofluoric acid. So it's going to get used up completely. The HF, we're going to use up an equivalent amount of that. And as these uh, react, as the acid-base neutralization happens, we're going to make an identical amount of the conjugate base. So at equilibrium or at that point, halfway through the titration or halfway to the equivalence point, we can see that we have some amount of the weak acid left. We've used up all the strong base that we've added so far, and we have some amount of this conjugate base. Well, what happens when we have a weak acid and its conjugate base? We have a buffer. So that's why you, what it means when it says, once you start the titration, but before you get to the equivalence point, you're making a buffer. And if you want to find the pH of that buffer, you'll need to know what your weak acid is, what your pKa is, and then when you have these concentrations of the conjugate base and its weak acid, you can, from those, find out what your pH is by using that buffer equation, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Before you start the titration, if we have our Erlenmeyer flask and we haven't added any base, then all we have is that weak acid, and we would need to know the Ka of that weak acid, and we could figure out what the pH is before we start. Once we get to the equivalence point, let's say the amount of sodium hydroxide that we add now is enough to get us right exactly to the equivalence point. It neutralizes all of the weak acid and we don't have any of that strong base left. So these are gonna be in the exact molar ratio that they are in the equation. We're gonna use up 100% of both of them. We're gonna make an identical amount of the conjugate base. So at that point, at the equivalence point, what do we have? No weak acid. All we have is the conjugate base of a weak acid, which is also a weak base. So we need to know the Kb of that conjugate base. And if we do, then we can find the pH. We would solve for a normal uh, weak base equation. After that, if we continue to add sodium hydroxide, whatever amount, let's say, um, Here we go. Let's say we added 0.2 of this. 
we use up all the HF, that's gone. We still have a fair amount of this remaining. So if I have a weak base and a strong base mixture, how do we determine the pH? Well, the weak base contributes way more hydroxides because of the 100% ionization. So we don't even need to look at the weak base. We can just look at how much of the strong base do we have and find what our pH is after the equivalence point. And that's why once we get past that equivalence point, all of a sudden you're gonna see that pH climb very, very rapidly uh, and plateau out into there into the very high uh, pHs or the very basic pHs because of the, the nature of that. So that's um, how you're gonna utilize or do potential um, titration equations or questions. And you're gonna need to identify where are you within those several possible scenarios. Have you started the titration yet? No, are you, you started it, but you're not to the equivalence point, or you are at the equivalence point now, or you're beyond the equivalence point. Um, and then we'll go to this next example. We saw the weak acid with a strong base. What about a weak base with a strong acid? Pretty much exactly the opposite. We can tell we're dealing with a base because we're starting at a basic pH or a high pH. You can see we're adding an acid, in this case, a strong acid, hydrochloric acid, and that pH is starting to decrease. Once we get to the equivalence point, we should see that the pH is um, slightly acidic because if we're dealing with ammonia here, if we're titrating, as we add the HCl, the ammonia is getting used up, getting neutralized and becoming ammonium, a weak acid. So at the half equivalence point, the concentrations of these two are equal. We have a buffer. We can find the pKa for that ammonium ion, use the henderson hasselbalch equation and find the pH at the half equivalence point. If we go beyond that, once we hit the equivalence point, all the ammonia is gone. It's used up. It's neutralized. The only thing that's left now is ammonium. So we would find the pH doing a weak acid equation with ammonium and using the Ka for ammonium. And we can see how we would get that slightly acidic pH. And then once we go beyond that, we're adding a lot of that strong acid and the pH drops very rapidly. And now we're calculating this pH just based on the concentration of that excess hydrochloric acid that we've added. So conceptual question, what's the pH at the half equivalence point in the titration of a weak base with a strong acid? So just what we saw there. And we know the pKb of the weak base is 8.75. So we're at the half equivalence point. So we're not to the equivalence point yet. So we have a buffer and we had a weak base. Our pKb was 8.75. We're gonna use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which is pKa oops, plus the log of the conjugate base over the acid. We know the pKb, we need the pKa to solve for this. So the pKb for ammonium is 8.75. What's the pKa, or the pKb for ammonia is 8.75. What's the pKa? Well, pKa times pKb should equal 14. So if we know the pKb, oop, then we can subtract that from 14 and get our pKa. So 14 minus 8.75 equals our pKa, which should be 5.25. If we're at the half equivalence point, the ratio of the um, conjugate base to the conjugate acid should be one to one. Um, so whatever those values happen to be, could be 0.1 and 0.1, could be one and one, eight and eight, but their ratio is one. The log of one is zero. And so we should see that the pH is equal to that pKa value in that instance. So if we go back to our question, yep, that's what we get right there. So we don't have to do a lot of fancy calculations there. That really just comes back to that Henderson-Hasselbalch and some relatively basic um, addition subtraction. Polyprotic acids. So what if we have something with multiple acidic hydrogens? A diprotic could have two, triprotic could have three. What does that look like? Well, because each of those acidic hydrogens has a different Ka and a different strength of acidity, what we're gonna see is in our titration curve, we'll actually have multiple equivalence points and they'll be equal to, to how many acidic hydrogens we have. So if it's diprotic, we should see two equivalence points, one uh, occurring much more soon than the other. Or if it's triprotic, we should see that we have three equivalence points. So here's the example of sulfurous acid. It's H2SO3, weak acid. It has two acidic hydrogens. One's gonna come off before the other. So as we add sodium hydroxide, we'll reach 
the first equivalence point, and then we continue to add, we'll hit the second equivalence point, and then end up um, at a very basic pH there at the end. Um, so that's everything for this. I'm gonna do one more short video on uh, indicators, and that should get you through everything with titration. Start these problems. That's again, the, the best way to figure out if you know the material or not, and see where your questions are. So have a good day, and like I said, I promise, uh, no more songs, no more singing.